Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of The Human Side of Marketing. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel. I'm here with your host, Kurt Stockwell. Hello, Chris. How are you today? I'm fantastic. I'm unbelievable, as Tom Hopkins used to say. Did you, did you ever know Tom Hopkins? Tom Hopkins, no. He was like a sales trainer, but his background was real estate. And he would say, uh, if people ask you how it's going, you always say unbelievable, because that could be oh. good or bad. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, I always like um, Dave Ramsey says, better than I deserve. <laughs> nice. Better than I deserve. That's so yeah. good. Yeah. Well, listen, I mean, we're, we're, we're deep in, uh, the human side of marketing episodes. Now this is like, I'm going to say 37 episode 37 yep. episode 37. We're trucking it along. It takes something consistency, man. It's like, but it's the, it's the silver bullet. I think people are looking for. Yeah. It's like we've said many times. The, uh, the idea here is to bring value. Uh, anybody listening who's thinking of like, how do I bring value to my customers? How do I Make yeah. a difference or a ripple in the marketplace. Um, hire Chris and have him help you, uh, <laughs> there you produce go. some uh, podcasts or some uh, some videos. Namaste. Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know there is something about like uh, consistency is not sexy. It is not like no. it is not that thing that's everybody's excited about. And I think you know I always say marketing is about relationship and yep. relationship happens in time over time. So yep. you know. Yep. I well, love doing this show, but there are definitely times when I'm like, oh man, I want to focus <laughs> on something else or I want to. <laughs> I know. Prepare. I know. But, but, but you, you continued, I mean, you told me this, you continue to get feedback on the show where people yeah. are like, Hey, this was, thanks for that. I really like that last one. Like you never know what episode is going to strike a chord with somebody and you just keep going, you know? Yep. Continue to bring value. Yeah. As, as Seth Godin would say. We love Seth Godin. Well, so how, how are you bringing value today? What are we talking about? What are we unpacking? We're going to talk about how to avoid communication failure. Nobody, nobody fails at communication, Kurt. No, nope. Everybody does a great job all <laughs> Everybody the time, 100% is... of the time, talking to their customers, talking to yes. their, to their uh, coworkers, talking to their spouses. Uh, I don't even know why we're talking about this. <laughs> yeah, right. Why, <laughs> right, exactly. So inevitably, Chris there will be communication breakdown. It's true. Yeah. All right. Led All right. Zeppelin. Fine. Led, Led Zeppelin song communication breakdown, I think. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I love Led Zeppelin. I think it's Zeppelin. Well, yeah, you're right. Every, uh, there is communication is one of the hardest things out there, whether it's internal with your team or external with customers, um, in your marketing to cold, cold audiences, like communication is a big deal. Yeah. Yep. One, so how do we avoid it? Well, um, you know what, to be truthful, there will be communication breakdown um, and being able to completely avoid it is likely not going to happen. So what happens when you do have a communication breakdown? Mm. Really? That's what we're talking about today. Got it. Okay. The, uh, the, the title was ju just juicy. So people would, juicy. would you know, click on it, right? Yes. Baby title. So I <clears throat> uh, got Andy and I, when we built our, we created our company, we, neither of us were, were business, uh, you know, had created a business before. Mm. We just knew how to build websites and do great marketing. So uh, we got a business coach right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Ted, Sm Ted Schmidt with Action Coach. If you're looking mm -hmm. for a business coach locally in Spokane, he's a great guy. But nice. uh, one of the things that he, uh, a mantra that he made us repeat constantly was communication is the response you get. Wow. Communication, communication. communication is the response you get. It's the response. So you what get. we're doing today, folks, is we're pointing the fingers back at ourselves. <laughs> right? Okay. Communication right? is the response I get to something I did. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Exactly. So, okay. you know, if we wanted to kind of paint a picture here, you've got a, uh, an email that you've gotten back or a phone call or whatever from a client mm. who seems a little frustrated or um, seems uh, kind of lost in the process. You know, when we build websites, sometimes it can take a few months to get that done. And somewhere in the process, there can be some communication breakdown. So when we get communication back from somebody and it seems like they've kind of misunderstood or they're, like I said, maybe upset about something, hmm. I'm always telling my team, okay, communication is the response you get. How, what, how did you communicate in a way that made them misunderstand what, hmm. you know, the way they took it, right? Yeah. Uh, or um, how can I do a better job of communicating this next time? And I think in a, it's such a, it's such an important thing to understand these days in a marketplace where the competition is fast and furious, you know, uh, like the, the, um, 
uh, uh, Silicon Valley uh, mantra you hear all the time is fail fast, you know? And so these, there's a lot of businesses that are quickly growing. There's competition, your competition, you know, might be in its infancy right now, but in a year could be a very, uh, um, uh, could be a contender for, for your customers. And right. one thing that you see a lot, and these are, these are things that um, are been, have been established by companies like Zappos, um, even like Costco, you know, they don't, there's like, when you return something from to Costco, for example, they don't ask any questions. They just return it. Mm -hmm. you know, Zappos, the same thing that company on the uh, online shoe store. And I guess they sell clothes and stuff right now too. They, yeah. they, you know, even like uh, even um, Amazon, you know, you want to return something, you just return it. So what my point is uh, the local, the, the modern consumer are, are used to getting their way are used to, um, are used to great customer service. Mm. Um, now I want to preface that to say, I, I never believed in the, uh, the, the quote that the customer is always right. Mm. You know, that I don't think that that's true, but in a modern, uh, in our, our, our current marketplace where people expect great customer service, they expect to be communicated with uh, in a, uh, in a, uh, a clear way. And so if you're not doing that and customers are, you know, coming back to you with questions and you're frustrated, you need to look at yourself first. So one, swallow your pride. Yeah. And I think two, um, keep thinking about how to improve your message, you know? So this falls right in line with the human side of marketing because, you know, your marketing is even going on during a process uh, of your customer, of, of delivering your product to your customer because, marketing is happening when they're talking to other people about your service. You know, the product was great, but the communication was poor during the whole process. I just felt like I never knew what was going on. It was, you know, it was always my fault at the end of the day, we're happy with the project. They do great work, but they're just really hard to work with. Mm. You know, that's marketing, right? Somebody's doing marketing for you because it's the word of mouth, right? Word of mouth marketing is the best. Mm. And so how do you, um, solve that problem of communication breakdown through a project. And a lot of times you have to point it back at yourself and go, how could I have done that better? Right. Yeah. I like that. Look at, um, at the idea that so many people think of marketing or messaging as an external, let's grow, grow the business with new people, but you have this, um, existing communication with, uh, the people that you're currently serving. And that also, like you said, is marketing. If it turns into word of mouth, it could be bad marketing for you, or it could be good marketing for you, depending on the type of communication failures you have avoided right or you have uh uh supported <laughs> right 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 yeah um you know and i think the third thing to remember too is like i said you know i don't adhere to the customer is always right there's going to be some people who are not your tribe mm. not your customer it's just not going to work out to you know we've done it before where, we, where we've reached out to an individual and just said hey you know i just don't think we work well together you know we want to help you find happiness elsewhere. <laughs> right. Nice. That's a nice way to say we're firing you. That um, can, that can avoid communication failure big time. Sometimes people just want to pick a fight. I've had those kind of people where it's not about communication failure anymore. Now it's just not, it's just, there's no chemistry. Like we can't, compatibility is off and we can't right, make it work. Right. So, and that, you know, goes into um, like online reviews often will, will, we're working with the company <laughs> and doing their marketing and, you know, like, well, Hey, let's, you do you have Google reviews? Do you have, um, you know, Yelp, God forbid, I'm not a big fan of Yelp, but, mm -hmm. um, do you have, uh, you know, reviews where, and you will, it's becoming less and less, but people say, you know, I don't want to open up the opportunity for somebody to slam us mm. online. And right. I'm like, no, that's an op that's, that is an opportunity for you to communicate clearly. Um, so when somebody does like give you a poor review, you immediately reply with, you know, some compassion and maybe a little bit of truth bomb dropped in there of like, you know, Hey, as you know, we tried to make that work, you know, whatever. Um, right. But communicating even through that platform of reviews and communicate or, or re replying to their, to their, um, uh, uh, that their, their review. Yeah. Does a, it, it, it's big when your other, other people are like, Oh, I wonder why they got a one star. Okay. This person, you know, was totally upset. And then you communicated clearly in the reply of, you know, your take on it in a very professional way. People appreciate that. People know there's individuals out there who are just jerks and, you know, nobody's ever going to please them. And so it's okay. You know, um, so 
communicate clearly in that aspect as well. Yeah, it's really good. <clears throat> I think that, um, what would you say if people started to figure this communication game out? I mean, obviously, like you said, you can't just completely avoid it, but <clears throat> as people start to improve their communication, what do you think happens? What are the results? What are the, what's possible on the other side of that? Well, like I said, I think that today's consumer is expecting better and better customer service. Um, and I really think that the, one of the biggest game changers in your business is clear communication. Um, you know, you can often we're wanting to work on our product or our processes or our team or hiring the right person or firing the right, you know, getting all of those things figured out. But often it, you know, clear communication is not something that people focus on as the, one of the top tier, um, focuses of, of their growth. But it's critical because people expect good customer service. And your team, too, also needs to understand, like, again, like I said, in, my, in our uh, company, that's uh, the mantra of communication is the response you get. How could we have communicated that clearer? My team now is looking at a reply to an email and the customer is, you know, like, confused or upset. And, they're, you know, and then they're putting it back on themselves going, how could I have communicated that better? Mm. Um, and so um, I think, again, a big game changer in where you can separate yourself from the competition is just focusing on really clear communication, whether that's in your marketing or whether that's in your customer service. And the, hum yeah. the, the, big humble, the big humble pill of looking back on yourself. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So good. How do people start to move this into action? Like if I'm sitting here listening to this and I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay. I got it, Kurt. Like, okay. I can take some humble pie and I know I could probably level up my communication internally and externally. Um, I'm not exactly sure where to start. How do people, like, where do people start with that? Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we, we help businesses find clarity in their marketing. Um, and again, that's a process that starts with your customer. And it starts with what problem are you solving for them? Like I've mm -hmm. said many times. Um, and often we are delivering that through a website, but we deliver that through other means as well. You know, sales letters or email campaigns or, you know, every once in a while, some, you know, print work. Um, and we're actually realizing that this conversation of how to communicate clearly internally and externally through, you know, uh, like this whole, how do I, how do I answer a question when a customer has a, a, a frustration, for example, you know, that, that conversation that we're having. And once we realize that the customer kind of wants to do a deep dive into their marketing, this pops up, you know, so we're helping people kind of mm -hmm. with that as well. So um, if you wanted to go to uh, clarifymymarketing.com, you can schedule a time with me. Um, if you want to go to welldressedwalrus.com, you know, that's where you can see some of our work. Um, and uh, connect with us there as well. And of course, the podcast is at the Human Side of Marketing on um, wherever you get podcasts. And we're actually, um, we're actually, uh, there's another URL that I'm going to throw out there called One Liner Workshop, the One Liner Workshop and dot com. And what that is is um, the One Liner, which we I've talked about many times, is a really great way to kind of jumpstart your marketing for a very low cost and a very minimal commitment to your time. So in about 45 minutes through these workshops, I help businesses clarify how they talk about their product or service when somebody asks, what do you do? So I'm gonna start offering this class, the one-liner workshop um, throughout the year. And so just go to that URL and find the next time that we're offering that class and come by and spend about 45 minutes fixing your messaging. Is it a one number one or is it O O N E? O N E. That's a good question. Yeah. O N E. Okay. And is it the T H E the one liner workshop? Yep. Uh, no, it's just one liner workshop. Yeah. One liner workshop.com. Got it. Perfect. All spelled out. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. Good stuff today. Uh, I mean, I'm a little bit, um, I'm a little bit tender now, sensitive after, um, being called out on my own communication breakdowns, but I, I accept the challenge, Kurt. I will look into how I, am the cause of, um, these communication responses that I'm getting. So, yeah, you got to look at yourself first. Yeah. You get to look at, to better, better check yourself before you wreck yourself, Kurt. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Well, thanks again for another great episode. I can't wait for the next one. And until then, take care. All right. Thanks, Chris.